has watched a video that I made years and years ago on supercharger lobes and they asked you did it in SolidWorks can you do it in FreeCAD I thought that was a pretty interesting idea so here I have modeled up supercharger lobes in FreeCAD now I want to cover two methods on making these because FreeCAD is awesome like that and does give you two options it's hard to see with graphics triangles in a CAD program but you can see that there's a very mild gap between these going all the way down right and that's that's what we want a super small mild gap um, so let's go through again how to make these supercharger loads I'm going to start by making a new part this is going to be again through the part workbench mostly uh, so I'm in a2 plus let me switch this to the sketcher workbench and I'm going to create a sketch let's go on the front plane now that we're in a sketch, I'm going to start with an arc. The center point will be on our Z axis there. Let's select both points and hit the H key for horizontal. I don't have my keyboard monitor uh, in this operating system. Let's do Shift H for a horizontal dimension. And let's go with 1.1. Let's go Shift V for vertical dimension. And with respect to the center line and the origin, we'll say 1.25 inches. And from here, I think that's uh, all that we want to do. We should have only one degree of freedom. And of course, that's going to be the uh, you know radius value that we put on this. So from here, let's grab another arc. And uh, let's grab our diagonal dimension from there to there, 1.25. From here to here, these endpoints, let's go with uh, 1.15. And we're fully constrained again, except for that one radius value in the ending point here. <laughs> to make things simple, I think I would like to add in a construction line. A for angle. Forty-five degrees and we still have that one degree of freedom right here that should soon be resolved though as we continue to add features let's go back to driving geometry from there to there we're going to select the endpoints add a vertical relation with the V key we're going to say E for equal we're going to add in a, a horizontal dimension of 1.25 and we should have a little nice relationship here so let's take the easy way I don't normally do this but uh, this is kind of a weird sketch so I'm going to apply it here let's select these two arcs and this horizontal line and we'll mirror across and then we have to add relations right um, so from here to here we have to add in uh, 1.25 that looks good from here to here we'll add in 1.25 looks good we'll grab from here to here 1.15 and uh, looks like that's already been carried over so we don't actually have to add that we still have five whole degrees of freedom All right so we're going to add in a uh, select these two h for horizontal that's already got a vertical relation so we're covered there uh, we want to add E for equal and E for equal over here. I want to take these two points and merge them together. And now we're fully defined. <laughs> that was sometimes these uh, mirrored sketches are quite a journey. I'm going to select these three arcs and this vertical line and do the same thing. Right, and then I can say uh, let's add in diagonal constraint from here to here as before. We're going to go from here to here as before. We're going to go, um, actually, let's go back to our diagonal constraint here. Here to here as before. Here to here as before. Uh, we still have six degrees of freedom, and that's a little bit overwhelming, actually, but we're going to say equal here. We already have an equal constraint there. I'll select 
these two arcs and add in an equal relation there. We're down to four degrees of freedom now. And let's just see if we can click and drag and figure out which ones these are, right? So we know that we want to have a vertical relation here. We want to have a distance horizontally of 1.25 here. We're down to two degrees of freedom, a little bit less daunting. Looks like we have to merge some points. So we'll grab that point there, merge. And of course we get well over to find there. So we'll uh, instead grab this point and this uh, arc here and choose coincident, which has a little bit more flexibility, but we still should have a closed sketch. From here to here, it looks like this endpoint or this arc is the only thing stopping us from being fully constrained. We do have our dimension um, on that, so I know that that's not the problem. Let's see here, one degree of freedom. I'm a little bit baffled because uh, I know we've added an equal relation. Yep. Um, something to do with that point. I'm going to go with my trick of adding a coincident, and there we go. Right, we just had to be coincident there. So we're going to close that. So let's get into methods of making this. The first way that I want to do is going to take us out of the part workbench. We go to Tools, Add-on Manager, and make sure that you've added on the Curved Shapes Workbench. Just click on that, click Install Update, and then you close and restart FreeCAD. So make sure you save your file. And when you restart FreeCAD, the added Curved Shapes Workbench will show up. So that's what we want to work out of. But first, I'm going to go to my Sketcher. And let's create a sketch. Um, there we go. Let's create a sketch on the XZ plane. Actually, no, that's what we've sketched on already, so I'm going to delete that infernal sketch. Let's create another sketch on the XY plane. Much better, much better. <laughs> and we're going to add a dimension over here and here. We'll give this a symmetric relation. Oops. Control Z, because I did it in the wrong order, right? here to here to here, symmetric. No, nope. maybe it's because I'm in a new operating system and it's uh, working a little bit differently. So here to here, we choose our point of, actually, I want to just choose this line and then the order doesn't matter, right? So we're gonna say symmetric, even better. Now, if you're serious about uh, this lobe, then make sure that you are actually exact on this dimension. And that might mean that you you know, turn this into a reference arc and then do two arcs that meet here so you have a point that you can import and snap this line right on so you know that you've got a perfect dimension. For me, 3.6 I think will work. Uh, let's give this line a dimension with Shift V. We're going to go with something like 14 inches long. We'll go E for equal and we'll add in an equal relation. And we are fully defined, right? Next, we want to go to the right plane, and that's the YZ. Let's do the exact same thing, right? We're making little bounding curves uh, for our workbench here. So we're going to say Shift V for, not Shift V for vertical, I meant symmetry, right? And I'll choose this line so that the order doesn't matter this time. Shift V for vertical dimension now at 3.6. Uh, shift H for horizontal dimension, and I think we said 14 inches before. E for equal here. We're fully defined, so we'll close that. Next, I want to choose first off my base sketch that I want to create the lobe off of, and then the two bounding sketches that I've made. And I, I have to do it in that order. And then we're going to go to curve shapes and choose this very first option here, creates an array and resizes items. And notice it creates uh, four items, right? So if we stand on our curved array and we come over here to solid, we're going to flip the switch to true. And now we've got a solid, but uh, we need this to twist. Well, that's pretty easy because if I set this twist value to say 100, <laughs> then we twist. 
but you can see an inherent problem. We lose the integrity of our surface. And that's because we're trying to run a loft in between four profiles, maybe five total, and uh, that just doesn't work. So let's up our profiles here. Five looks a little better, six is way better, right? So I'm gonna keep a tight curve at 50 profiles. And uh, there's what 50 looks like, nice and smooth. Uh, so we've created a lobe that way. Uh, so I'm going to save that. So that's method one on how to make a, a supercharger lobe. There's a few things that I find quite interesting. And I think this might be just part of the computational uh, array behind the curve shapes workbench. But if I were to give this an extreme twist, right, a thousand, you'll notice that at first, it doesn't twist as much, and then it holds a very nicely consistent uh, twist value. I haven't gotten to the bottom as to why, but just know that there might be a slight difference in the beginning profile of the supercharger lobe. That does not seem to affect meshing. So don't worry about them meshing together, but just know that if, if that's an issue, uh, that, that, that could be a thing. So I'm going to set this back to 100, maybe... 300, right? That looks a bit super, oh, that's a bit sharp. 200 it is then, right? That's a bit supercharger-ish. Uh, let's go through another way of making this. So I'm gonna do a save as here. And let's go with deleting our curved array and our two bounding sketches, right? So here we have our profile that we just finished off with. I'm gonna head on back to the part workbench. Let's throw in a helix. We want our radius to be something like 3.6 divided by two, right? <laughs> And let's close that, because when I hit enter, I created it. So we'll finish up our, our editing from here. Uh, the next thing, actually, I'll double click on my helix for better visualization, and just turn my helix 90 degrees, right? We're gonna close that. And I want my height to be 14 inches, I believe. We want our pitch, um, let's try 28 inches, right? Something big. Next. Uh, I think there's a way that I can make my height reversed. I'm not sure if I can do negative uh, 14. Looks like it won't let me. So instead, I'll uh, double click and just pull a nice and easy 180 over here, right? So there we have it. And next, I want to do a sweep. Now the results may look intriguing. We're going to grab our sketch as a selected profile. We'll click on Sweep Path and choose our path in the graphics display. Done and OK, right? So we've done a sweep, but first off, we're a surface. We're a hollow surface. And second off, we're not twisting. So how do we address this? The first thing, let's stand on our sweep and choose True for Solid. That takes care of that. And then we want our sweep path to be determined differently or to be, you know, read or interpreted differently. So on uh, this option, we're gonna make it true. And now we have our nice twist. And we're looking quite supercharger-ish. So how do we make this an assembly? First off, we'll want some faces um, to constrain in our assembly. And that would be realistic to have some faces to mechanically attach these two. So we're gonna go to Sketcher, Stand on Nothing, and um, I can just choose my front plane, it looks like. We're gonna add a hole. And uh, we're not actually centered on the origin, so I'll select my origin, select my other point, merge them together. Shift R for a radius and 0.5, bit big, 0.375, better. We'll close, go back to the part workbench. And we'll uh, do an extrude on our sketch. We'll make this 18 inches. Then we're gonna apply and close. Next, I can go to my extrude. 
we're going to go yes on reversed and then I can choose this body and then my extrude in that order and hit cut and there we've got a nice face that we've cut next um, we'll do a save and then a save as I'm going to save this as lobe 2 and what I want to do is come back to my helix and you would do this on the uh, do the same thing with the other workbench I just showed you we want to make sure that this uh, is a reverse twist so now we're going to go left-handed and rebuild. Now with the left-handed twist, uh, we can give it a save. Let's make a new file now. We'll go to the A2 Plus workbench, add that in with the add-on manager if you haven't already. We'll add in a part, and you can download these files from, free, uh, from uh, my GrabCAD account as well. I'm going to add in a part called Bracket, which I've modeled up. Right, so we're going to add in a model called bracket. And there's my bracket. We'll grab another part. And uh, I believe it's lobe method 2 video. And now, as has been pointed out in past videos, I can grab two edges and select this constraint. And uh, we can accept that. Next, grab another one, and I save this as lobe 2, I believe, maybe, yeah. we'll give it the same constraint, we'll flip direction, and we did not, so we're going to delete this, and let me grab the correct lobe here. Add in another part, lobe 2 video, that's the one I want, right? So they have the same pitch. The pitch is quite arbitrary. Um, I mean, I'm, it plays a huge role in the design, but just in getting them to mesh for my purposes is really not too bad. All right, so we'll go here to here, same constraint, and we'll accept. Sometimes I might want to add a flat somewhere back here so I can constrain the angle. But uh, that's a basic supercharger lobe assembly. Uh, and some other things that I might want to try. I actually haven't tried this before. But uh, I can edit my part. And I can do things like add fillets. Part design. Add a fillet. That's a one millimeter fillet. And it looks like it went well, right? So. You can add fillets and adjust their size. Let's try going with, I don't know. Oh, it looks like that broke. <laughs> so add smaller fillets. And uh, yeah, that should be making supercharger lobes in FreeCAD. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.